This top layer here is just mulch. It's something that I put down on my garden in order to help keep the weeds away and the growth moist that's underneath it. You can see by the amount that I'm scraping away that this has multiple layers of mulch over top of it. Mulch, after a number of years, starts to break down and it turns into soil. This brown surface that we're revealing now is soil. Underneath this soil, there is clay bottom. So here's my first scoop. And you can see that I'm going to find inert materials, such as this root. You want to make sure that you get rid of that. And this is still brown. The brown, again, soil, not. So I want to stop for a minute and show you the difference in the soil surfaces. This would be my top uppermost level where I have my mulch. Down here, this area, you can see that soil. And let me move some of this out of the way. And you can see the soil line turn to become a clay line. And that everything else at this point is going to be usable clay. This orange, that color, that's what we're looking for. This is a part of the ground that is very rich in iron and heavily clay bound. The backfilling is when you take all the material that you've removed from the source and you put it back where it belongs. It's a good idea that you take the time to do this in a very safe way, not just leaving a hole or covering up something. This is pretty loose, and if somebody were to walk on it, they might hurt themselves. So I would want to make sure that this is tamped down harder. I like to have a bucket at the ready here so that I can take my clay and separate it from the topsoil. And even though I get a little bit of the other material in it, it's not really going to matter. But what I don't want to do is put this particular piece in it because it is half clay and half soil. So I'm going to knock off the soil, keep that here in the garden for some good growth, and just let this clay come into play. Here is another nice chunk. Look at this beautiful color right here, this red-orange color. That's most likely a rock. But we take off the soil. So I want to keep as much pure clay as I can. And then put the clay, actually that wasn't a rock, that's really nice. Let me put the clay into my bucket here. And collect as much as you think you'll be using or you'll need. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to demonstrate how you're going to make clay out of the earthenware that you've dug up from your yard. Now, if you remember, I dug past the regular soil into the clay body, and this is what I was left with. I'm going to break up this clay, not into extremely small pieces, just small enough that I can have water run through this and I'm using a bucket here. Make sure that whatever bucket you're using you've gotten permission to use it and that somebody isn't saving that for something else. I like to make sure that when I'm working I protect my table. What I have down is just a regular kitchen trash bag. Ooh, there's a rock. Let's get rid of that. Um, if I can get rid of a rock right away, I will, but it doesn't really matter because most of the rocks and the sediment is going to just sit at the bottom of this bucket. So, smaller pieces in, bigger pieces broken up, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add water to my clay. This is a lot of water. It's more water 
than what you would anticipate. And I'm going to simply take my hands and break up the clay body in this water. And the clay is going to suspend itself within the water. Also, what this will do is it'll allow the bigger pieces to break down into smaller pieces. And you will see some pretty sloppy water. What you want to do is make sure that all of this is broken up. So I'm going to stir this pretty vigorously with my hands, making sure again that I'm trying to suspend as much of this clay in the water as possible. I have a kitchen strainer here that I'm going to use to be able to get the impurities out of this water and I'm going to strain off only the clay body that will be suspended within the water. This is going to help us remove all of the sand that's naturally in the soil and it's going to take out any of the rocks that's in the soil and you'll see that your clay really starts to break up and become more like mud. And that's good, that's what you want. I've been stirring this clay and water for about five minutes now. And most of the clay has dissolved. I can still feel some stones and some sand at the bottom. And that will not dissolve into the water. We don't want it in the water and uh, we're ready to separate this out. I have just a plastic container and a general kitchen strainer. And I'm going to use this kitchen strainer to strain out some of the impurities that are suspended in the water. see that down here we have some larger pieces of clay but if you put your hand to into it it feels very sandy so this is inert material that wouldn't go into clay anyway and caught in our strainer is other material that we would naturally find within our earthenware pieces of sticks and twigs. And this we're going to just leave to the side. We don't need it. This container has just the suspended particles of clay within water. And because the clay content in my yard is pretty high, it looks pretty much like a milkshake. I'm going to let this sit for about 20 minutes and let the impurities settle down to the bottom and the clay separate through. I've taken my container outside and I've allowed it to sit. This is what we're seeing after 20 minutes. You'll see that there's a separation here where the water is becoming more clear What's occurring is the clay body is settling within this area. We'll come back in another 20 minutes and see what occurs. Coming back to my container, I'm looking to see how the water is settling and the clay is separating. This is another 20 minutes and you can see that the separation process has more than doubled. I'm coming back and checking my container about an hour after the initial pour. As you can see, the amount of fluid that is starting to clear up is getting larger and larger. I probably have about a quart that has already allowed the sediment to be extracted. And this area right here is 
what is being left to uh, make the clay. Two and a half hours have gone by since we put the container to settle. We now have approximately a quart and a half of liquid here, and all of this is the clay sediment. The next step here is to take our container, pour the water off, retain as much of the sediment as we can, use a cloth for straining, and I also have a rope in case I need to hang it up. It's very easy to do. I'm using a pillowcase. This is a very inexpensive, very old pillowcase. If you don't have something at home that can serve for this purpose, you can substitute any cloth that has a very tight weave in it. If you'd like to, you can go to the Goodwill and you can buy these for five cents. All right, let's get started. First things first, let's pour off this water. This is why I'm outside. Just gonna pour very carefully the water off the top. The reason I am doing this slowly is so I don't disrupt the sediment or the clay that's down at the bottom. Starting to show me just a little bit of clay coming to the lip of the container right there, and I'm gonna stop. There's still a considerable amount of water left in here, but it will strain off with my, with my pillowcase. Now that I've poured the water off, I'm gonna put the entire remaining solution in this pillowcase. I like to bring it into a corner and then dump it very quickly, just like that. No special skill required. You'll find that there's some sediment left in the bottom of this, which is perfectly fine. And then you just want to bring all of your clay into one corner of this pillowcase, just like this. And you can see it's dripping. That's perfect. That's what we want. One of the things this I'm is... fond of saying is that necessity is the mother of invention. No time like the present to test out that theory. I have my clay suspended in water, what's left of the moisture, and that's been put into my pillowcase. I have a string here that I've tied around the pillowcase so that I can actually dry this. And since I already have this contraction here ready to feed my birds, I'm gonna make use of it simply by clipping in this and letting this just hang this way. Now that I have my pillowcase suspended, it just needs to hang here for several hours so that the water drips out. This is the same theory as using coffee through a coffee filter. What we'll have later on is moisture leaving the clay and the clay body will be ready to use. But it's gonna take several hours. So we're gonna come back to this and check on it later. My clay has been sharing space with this birdhouse for the last couple of days. Initially, I thought the water would drip out of the case and it would only take several hours. What really came to play was evaporation. Not only do the water particles have to come through this pillowcase, but it needs to be warm enough and hang out long enough so that the clay starts to firm up. As you're doing this process, go out several times and check to see what's happening with your clay. How firm is it? How loose is it? Does it feel like something you really wanna put your hands in? If it's too firm, you can try to add water into it once you get back into the studio. But if it's too loose, you're going to need to just let it sit and continue to firm up. We're ready to take this clay into the studio and see how it behaves. It feels a little soft, but once we get it on canvas and start rolling it around in our hands, it will start to dry up. So come on and follow me into the studio. Let's see what we have.
I've had this clay sitting out on this canvas and drying for a little while, but it's still way too moist and I want it to dry out just a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is roll it out a little bit, press it down, and I'm going to use my original pillowcase to go over the top of my clay like this. I might roll it out even a little more, spreading it out so that the clay, as it flattens out, will dry a little more rapidly. If I take my pillowcase up, you'll see that the clay is moving, spreading out more. If I were to take my rolling pin and go right over top of my clay like this without having the pillowcase over top of it, the clay might stick to my rolling pin. You don't want to let it get it too stiff because it's easier to let the clay dry out than it is to pick it all up and add water into it. This clay feels pretty good, has a lot of the properties of the clay that we purchase through the ceramic supply house. And I think this is ready to be covered in plastic. This clay is ready to be stored. I have just a regular Ziploc bag. I'm going to put the clay in the bag, take the air out of the bag, and store it until I'm ready to use it.